A tracheostomy tube is a medical device which acts as an artificial airway. It is inserted directly into the trachea through a surgically created hole called a stoma. Breathing is done mostly through the tracheostomy tube and bypasses the upper airway. When breathing in, air travels through the tracheostomy tube and down to the lungs. When breathing out, air travels from the lungs up the respiratory tract and out through the tracheostomy tube. Tracheostomy tubes come in different styles and can be made from various materials such as metal and plastic. Join me this week as I discuss what the difference is between plastic and metal tracheostomy tubes. Dr. Jackson, who lived from 1865 to 1958, is credited with standardizing the modern technique of tracheotomy. Dr. Jackson invented numerous instruments for the airway, including his version of a tracheostomy tube. His tracheostomy tube was commercially available by 1911. This tracheostomy tube continues to be made today and is available in a wide range of sizes. The metal tracheostomy tube can either be made from stainless steel or sterling silver. The brand name of the metal tracheostomy tube is called a Jackson tracheostomy tube in honor of Dr. Jackson. Metal tracheostomy tubes are extremely durable. They can be washed, sterilized, and reused. Metal tracheostomy tubes have their own sizing system. They start at a size 00. zero. They increase to a size 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. The largest size is a size 10. Metal tracheostomy tubes do not have cuffs on them. A cuff is needed to provide a sealed circuit with a ventilator. When a sealed circuit is created, the ventilator can provide full respiratory support. Without a cuff, some air will leak around the tracheostomy tube and up through the nose and mouth. Metal tracheostomy tubes are usually not recommended for those who need full breathing support from a ventilator. Original Jackson tracheostomy tubes do not have a 15 millimeter connector. A 15 millimeter connector is needed to attach the tracheostomy tube to a ventilator tubing circuit. Without a 15 millimeter connector, the original Jackson tracheostomy tubes cannot be connected to a ventilator. In an emergency where positive pressure ventilation is needed, one medical journal suggests removing the universal 15 millimeter connector from the end of a size 6 endotracheal tube, attaching it to the tracheostomy tube, and ventilating via a resuscitation bag. On some metal tracheostomy tubes, they do have a 15 millimeter connector on the inner cannula. With the inner cannula in place, the metal tracheostomy tube can be connected to a ventilator. Metal tracheostomy tubes can also have holes in the shaft which are called fenestrations. The holes allow for air to pass through the tracheostomy tube. This may help a person who has a tracheostomy tube better vocalize and produce speech. In some parts of the world, metal tracheostomy tubes are the standard tracheostomy tube used because they are very cost effective. One tracheostomy tube can be purchased for around 10 US dollars. The tracheostomy tube can be washed and reused many times. According to my insurance company, metal tracheostomy tubes should last for at least one year. Metal tracheostomy tubes are not to be used when getting an MRI. If a person needs an MRI who uses a metal tracheostomy tube, please talk to your medical provider about changing to a plastic tracheostomy tube for the MRI. Plastic tracheostomy tubes are the most common tracheostomy tubes. They are made by many different manufacturers and have brand names which include Shiley, Cortex, and Traco. 
plastic tracheostomy tubes are usually made of one of two materials, either polyvinyl chloride, abbreviated as PVC, or polyurethane. Body heat often warms up the plastic in the tracheostomy tube. This allows the plastic to become flexible while in the airway. The International Organization of Standardization, ISO, is a non-governmental international organization. For tracheostomy tubes, they created the following sizing. The size of the tracheostomy tube is based on the internal diameter of the tracheostomy tube without the inner cannula. For example, a tracheostomy tube which has an internal diameter of 3.5 millimeters is called a size 3.5. Many manufacturers of tracheostomy tubes adopted this new sizing system. However, the Shiley and Jackson tracheostomy tubes continue to use the Jackson sizing. For more information about tracheostomy tube sizing, please see the following video, ISO sizing versus Jackson sizing. What is the difference? Plastic tracheostomy tubes come in cuffed and uncuffed versions. A cuffed tracheostomy tube has a balloon-like structure on the distal end of the tracheostomy tube. It can be inflated and deflated. When the cuff is inflated, a sealed circuit is created. When connected to a ventilator, this allows the ventilator to provide full respiratory support. Plastic tracheostomy tubes can also have holes in the shaft, which are called fenestrations. The inner cannula is a tube which fits inside the tracheostomy tube. It acts as a liner and is useful for individuals who require secretion management. The inner cannula reduces the diameter of the tracheostomy tube lumen, which in turn will increase resistance and the work of breathing. However, the advantage of having an inner cannula is that if the tracheostomy tube becomes clogged with mucus, the inner cannula can easily be removed, clearing the tracheostomy tube of the mucus plug. Most tracheostomy tubes have the ability to use an inner cannula with the tracheostomy tube. However, the Shiley single cannula tracheostomy tube does not have an inner cannula. Plastic tracheostomy tubes range in price from 40 US dollars to over $100. According to the manufacturers of plastic tracheostomy tubes, plastic tracheostomy tubes should be changed once a month. Once the tracheostomy tube has been used for 30 days, it should be thrown away. Plastic tracheostomy tubes should not be washed and reused. Plastic tracheostomy tubes are safe to use during an MRI. For people using a cuffed tracheostomy tube, the pilot balloon often has a metal spring inside. It is recommended to tape down the pilot balloon to prevent it from possibly flying around during the MRI. The metal tracheostomy tube is an excellent placeholder. It preserves the stoma and is a great tracheostomy tube to use when an artificial airway is needed. Metal tracheostomy tubes are very cost effective. They have an inner cannula, which may make managing secretions easier. They can have fenestrations in the shaft of the tracheostomy tube to allow for better vocalization. Plastic tracheostomy tubes come in many different shapes and sizes. They can be cuffed or cuffless. They can have fenestrations in the shaft of the tracheostomy tube to allow for better vocalization. Plastic tracheostomy tubes have a 15 millimeter connector which allows the tracheostomy tube to be connected to a ventilator. Plastic tracheostomy tubes are safe to use during an MRI. The metal tracheostomy tube has a rigid construction. It does not bend. Metal tracheostomy tubes do not have cuffs on them and are not recommended to be used with a ventilator. If a person needs to use mechanical ventilation, such as during surgery, the ear, nose, and throat team will usually switch the patient to a plastic tracheostomy tube which has a cuff on it. Metal tracheostomy tubes are not safe to use during an MRI. 
Once a plastic tracheostomy tube has been used for 30 days, the plastic tracheostomy tube should be discarded and a new tracheostomy tube should be inserted. The plastic tracheostomy tube cannot be washed and reused like a metal tracheostomy tube. Plastic tracheostomy tubes can be very expensive. They can cost over 100 US dollars. Both plastic and metal tracheostomy tubes are excellent medical devices. To find out which one will suit your specific needs, please talk to your medical provider. Thank you so much for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe down below. I hope you have a great day and a wonderful week. Bye-bye.